now I'd like to get into the agronomic part of the, the discussion. So we're going to talk about crop yield and quality. And again, for this specific discussion, we're going to focus on the crops that were in this study, which were um, potato, barley, wheat, and sugar beet. And so in this first bar graph, you can see that we have, um, this is data collected from 2016 from the Southfield. And this is Russet Burbank. And we went with Russet Burbank because it's a really standard typical potato. We weren't trying to pick varieties that were going to, you know, be more susceptible or less susceptible to nutrient leads, release or other things. We wanted to grow what growers were growing. And so that's why we went with all the varieties that we'll be talking about today. So we did not see a statistical difference in uh, yield in 2014 or 2016 between the fertilizer treatment and the manure treatments. But some things that we did see um, in both years and in another study is that the, the tubers, the large size class tubers do tend to get bigger, or we, I'm sorry, not get bigger, we get more of those large size class tubers on, the, on those heavier manure plots. And one theory is the porosity, the less bulk density, the soil aren't as dense, and maybe those spuds can move and get bigger. Um, other more obvious thing, or more other, other, um, Thoughts are more nutrients may also be a part of that, or maybe a release of that nitrogen later in the season might also be contributing to that. Another potato response I wanted to show you was specific gravity. And this is a, a quality response that's really important to potato growers. And if their specific gravities are too low, then, um, then some of the processing plants will actually turn them away. And so this is a really important component. And so in 2016, we saw that when we did manure, take a year off, manure, take a year off, we actually had pretty good um, specific gravities that year and no significant difference from the fertilizer and even the heaviest manure treatment in that year. However, once we started putting manure on every other year, I mean every year, and again, this is twice as much manure as what we saw at the biennial, um, we did start to see those specific gravities drop. And we have seen this consistently in 2014 and in another study. And the theories here is that soil salinity and maybe that late nitrogen release or a combination of both things may be contributing to this drop in specific gravity. And so it is something that is important for these potato growers to, um, to know and understand. I also like that we found this because, you know, it kind of gave some validity to the potato growers who said, you know, we'd like to take a year off. And maybe they didn't you know, know exactly why. Um, and now we have some data to say, yeah, you know, that probably is um, a practice worth considering, especially as you get into these moderate rates. In terms of sugar beets, we did see um, a significant increase in beet yield, no matter how much manure we put on, from a very small amount to an excessive amount, those beet roots got big. And again, I, I feel like that's probably related to the, the decreased bulk density um, and may have made it so those roots could really expand and, and get a lot bigger. Again, nutrients may also be a part of that as well. But I will say that when we, with the fertilizer treatments, we always added um, an abundant amount of fertilizer. We were never trying to skimp on that and, um, and kept up with the University of Idaho recommendations on those treatments. So, okay, that's great. We saw increased root yield, but what you need to understand is that we also saw a significant decrease in sugar content as we increased those manure rates. And we saw this in, the, in 2014 as well. And this is something that is already kind of known in the sugar beet industry that um, high nitrogen, especially if it's applied or released late in the season, can cause um, an increase in brain nitrates, an increase in impurities, a decrease in sugar content and a decrease in extractability. And so um, this is something that was known, but it, now we have some numbers to say this is something that the sugar beet growers do actually really need to be cognizant of. And again, this supports that putting on a little bit of manure um, every other year or a really small manure um, every year, they might do okay, um, be able to get, keep that sugar content um, from getting too low. In terms of malt barley, I'm showing data from 2015. Uh, we saw an increase in percent grain protein. And um, that's, my understanding is probably related to that, again, that total nitrogen pool and a release of nitrogen when the plant needs it and is um, getting it into the, into the grain. Um, 
For malt barley, that's not exactly great news. Uh, for malt barley, you actually want to keep your grain proteins around 12.5, give or take, depending on the industry standard that you're working with. And so that's, this is something that the um, barley industry is watching really closely. Um, but again, if you're working with these lower manure rates um, and just applying a little bit every other year, um, and in this case, even a little bit every year seem to be okay. However, I do want to note that we did start losing yield. We never increased yield with manure when it came to barley. Um, so when we had these really high rates, we actually lost yield. And one of the other things that we think is going on is we, um, we know that we see lodging uh, with more manure. And this is a picture of the barley that we had on a manure plot. And you can actually see the edges of that barley, of that uh, specific plot. So we have very little doubt that it was the manure that had caused that lodging. And so that is something to be aware of. Um, the causes for that lodging, we're still trying to figure all that out, but it happened both years that we did that. So we're pretty sure that that's causing that. In terms of grain protein, we saw an increase in grain protein on the hard red wheat uh, in both years, 2000, I'm sorry, 2013 and 2015. And that is good news for hard red spring wheat. They do want higher proteins. Um, but again, we did start to see yields drop. Uh, we see like a yield increase um, at the lower rates of manure. And I think this all kind of suggests that wheat is actually pretty compatible with uh, moderate amounts of manure applications. But when you get too high, you also saw, we also saw lodging with the wheat as well, even though it wasn't as severe with the barley. So key points to walk away with today uh, is that total nitrogen, also phosphorus, also potassium, and soil salinity all increase significantly at the first foot depth with increasing manure rate and frequency. And so I feel like these findings kind of uh, reiterate the importance of soil testing and manure systems, that they really are changing the nutrients and what's happening there. And the more that someone understands exactly how it's changing, the more they can either cut back on their additional fertilizers or maybe even take a year or two off in their manure application to allow those, um, those soils to mellow and allow the plants time to take up those nutrients to get them off the field. The increase in total soil nitrogen um, was really interesting and it showed more potential for mineralizable nitrogen release over the season. Um, also in terms of the important soil key points is that uh, the improved soil structure and soil organic matter levels um, were very apparent with more manure. Um, and this can be seen as somewhat of an immediate soil health fix, but it does come with quite a bit of baggage. And so the more um, we can be cognizant of that, the better. In terms of plant nutrient uptake, um, the grains were very effective nitrogen removers. Um, barley took up more nitrogen with more manure, while wheat did not. Um, and root crops uh, were less effective nitrogen removers. And it wasn't that this is necessarily news, but we were really able to show it with some data exactly um, where those efficiencies lied, lied, laid. So um, they did leave behind a lot of nitrogen rich residues in the field as opposed to taking them off the field. In terms of agronomic responses, soil factors um, likely increased, um, soil factors included um, increased soil organic matter and increased soil total nitrogen pools um, as other, as well as this improved soil structure may have caused the following observed responses that I just described, including spiral nematode suppression, more large size class potato tubers, increased grain proteins, increased wheat yields, at least at the lower rates that we worked with. Um, and then we also feel like the soil factors, um, including the total nitrogen, the increase in total nitrogen and the increase in soil salinity may have caused the less savory falling observed responses, including um, delayed maturity, which we didn't talk about as much today, but we did see a lot of these, um, the heavy manure plots stayed greener longer um, for the, most of the crops we were working with, which can have an impact on the quality. Um, lodging in cereals, especially in barley, um, they, contributed to yield, they may have contributed to yield loss in barley and wheat at the very high rates, and a decrease in potato tuber specific gravity. And these are all um, pieces of information that's really important for potatoes, for all growers to understand to be successful. And finally, it caused a decrease in sugar content for sugar beets with increasing manure rate.
So what are the plans for the next couple of years? Um, so in 2018, uh, they, and when I say they, I mean April Latham, because I'm hanging out here in Corvallis, Oregon now, will be growing sugar beets and potatoes in 2018. And the ARS is doing, continuing to do a great job leading the study, and I'm really appreciative that they have shown interest in keeping the study going and staying with the original vision. Um, and in time, I'm actually soliciting funds from potato and wheat industry and potentially the barley industry as well to begin really honing in on these recommendations for stakeholders um, on how to manage manure systems um, in both a productive and environmentally friendly uh, manner, taking both aspects into account. We really appreciate all the funding that we've had over the years. It's uh, been a very expensive study and we could not have done it with all of the support of this uh, these important funders. So uh, really appreciate their, their continued support and, uh, and, and so on. Uh, acknowledgements goes beyond what I have on this slide, but we've had a tremendous amount of uh, cooperators involved in this study and they've really strengthened the, the quality of the research that's come out of this, um, this work and can't say how much I appreciate having them on our team. And with that, I'll leave you with my address, my email and my phone number. And um, even though I am here in Oregon, I am staying uh, involved in the study from a distance. And so um, I just took a, grow, a talk from a, I just took a phone call yesterday from a, a grower in, uh, in Idaho who was uh, interested in putting manure on and had questions about uh, how to do that. So I'm, I am still happy to provide support um, as needed as I start to build my new world over here. And that is it. Thank you.